Amen. Gabe, here you go, buddy. Follow sister. Follow sister. Hallelujah. Bless Tom and Kim. Lord, thank you for Children's Church this morning. Let's just turn our attention over there just a minute. Father, we pray for Children's Church this morning. God, have your way in those boys and girls. Change their lives. Change their destiny this morning, Lord. God, thank you for your power at work through Tom and through Kim and just give them boldness and, Lord, just uh, clarity and, Lord, that every child would be ministered to today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Amen. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. While you're turning there, here we go. If you'll give your attention to the screen. Amen. Lights down. Lights down. Action. this morning. Thank God for the church. We love Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not dissing on that, am I? (laughs) We love Jesus. Jesus loves his church and we are his body. Amen. And I believe you cannot function as a believer, someone that loves God apart from his church. So we're going to talk about today what it means, really means to be devoted to the church. And while you're thinking about that, how many knows what next Sunday is? Besides March the 8th. Spring break. Spring forward. Amen. Spring break and spring forward. Amen. So we're going to turn them clocks forward one hour and nobody's going to be late. Amen. Amen. You're going to come at 1130 and you're going to think, boy, that was a short service, wasn't it? <laughs> And you do come early next Sunday, right? If you don't, do it right. I get them mixed up. So spring your clocks for it. If you don't, we'll be meeting you on the way out. Amen. And everybody say, I wish. No, I'm kidding. Not likely. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him praise for what he's already done this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad for the victory this morning. Amen. We are the church. We got a mission to do. And as I've talked about over the last several weeks, number one is love Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Be a friend of Jesus. Have a relationship with Jesus. It's not enough just to have a head knowledge. It's not enough just to to be in church and be religious. I, Paul said, I want to know him. So we want to love him, know him. He wants to be our friend. 
have a relationship, an intimate relationship with him. That's priority. And through that, and as a result of that, he pours his love out through us, and we get to serve other people. We get to minister. Amen? We get to use our gifts and our talents for his glory. But it flows not out of some uh, religious activity, but out of a heart that loves God. And so we're doing it. Show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. And so out of that love for God and faith in God, we work, we serve, we do, we minister. We not just tell the good news, but we demonstrate it and we show it. And the vehicle to do that is the church. Amen, the organized church. <laughs> Aren't you glad for the organized church? I mean, anybody want an unorganized church? Nope. But Jesus, as we talked about, preparing the church. I'm not going to uh, go through all my slides. Slides up there, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Okay? But the church that he died for, it's the church we live for. And I added a little one. It's the church he's coming for. Amen? That's what it's all about right there. He died for it. We're going to live for it. And he's going to come for it. He purchased it. This was last Sunday, so get the, get the CD, okay? He, he purchased it. He's preparing it. He's going to present it to, him, to himself. Hallelujah. Woo! Glorious church. Got to talking about that. I wanted to put, you know, the hardest thing to do is what? What, what am I going to preach? What not to preach? Oh, God. Somebody said, how do you get a sermon every Sunday? How do you just get one every Sunday? That's why I go so long. No, I'm kidding. But I got to think about the glory Jesus said that you have given me, I have given them. Oh. The glory that God gave his son is the same glory that the son gave his church. The glory. Who God is. God in all of his fullness. That's the church, isn't it? The body of Christ might grow up under the head and experience and be the fullness of Christ to the world. I believe we can do it. Anybody with me? Because God's given us his glory, his power, his anointing. The church, the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. Come on, somebody. The church is not going to fail. He's going to present it to himself, a glorious church, a spot, a church without spot or without blemish. And it is his body. And I believe, according to Acts 2.42, his body deserves your devotion. His body, the church, it deserves, it commands, your devotion, your dedication, your commitment. Let's read there in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Look on the screen or look in your Bible. Look in your Bible to make sure I didn't make a mistake here, you know. I got tickled up. Robin's mom said something yesterday. She told me. I got thinking about it. Robin said, whatever Pastor Randy says, what did she say? Well, I'm going to put a little parenthetical on that. Amen. Because we're going to talk about that a little bit in a minute. But uh, check me out. Amen. Don't blind. Don't I know what she was saying. Okay. But don't blindly follow nobody. Amen. That's dangerous. That's unhealthy. So check me out right here. And they devoted themselves. What's that word? Devoted. Call attention to that. They devoted themselves. The church did, had just been born, just been birthed, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. This word devoted here, your Bible may say something else, depending on what version. I think this is, I don't know. uh, But steadfastly, what's King James say? They, They continued steadfastly. And it means to be constant. To adhere to, 
to attend assiduously. I, I got me a little doodad on my phone here, dictionary. Man, look up good words and cool, man. Assiduously. What did you learn about today? Assiduously. Just no okay. But it, it means to attend to all the exercise, to be diligent, devoted, committed, delicated, Delicate. Oh, Lord. There's, see, that's not in the dictionary. <laughs> you won't find that in Webster's. Delicated. That means, I know, but I was just using that other word. Delicated. That's a, that's a cross between diligence and dedication. Moving right along. Thank you, brother. But it means to attend to, to be diligent and earnest towards. How devoted are you to the body, to the leaders, to the teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to communion, to partnership, to, to participation? So if you, if you looked at your life and on a scale of 1 to 10, and you're going to say, I am devoted to the church on a scale of 1 to 10. I think it ought to be a 10. I think all of us got room for improvement, right? I mean, we can all improve, but I think we need to be wholly, fully devoted to the church. Why do I say that? Because he purchased it with his own blood. It's not man's idea. This is God. So we're not devoting ourselves to a man or to men or women. We're devoting ourselves to his body, which happens to be men and women, boys and girls the body of Christ. And so to be constant, adhere to, uh, diligent, earnest towards. They devoted themselves. They continued steadfastly. A community of believers. And, And that word community, that participation, fellowship, partnership. It's not just coming together. It's not just attending a meeting. God, help us see the church for what it really is, the body of Christ. Members, we're going to talk about that, connected together. In fact, I want to use the word belonging. Belonging. That, you know, a lot of people don't want to belong. As I I talked about last, if you dedicate yourself, you devote yourself, you make a commitment, guess what? That, that, That puts some responsibility on you. So that's why people want to live together and not get married. And they treat the church the same way. I just attend. I I just go. You know, I've just got uh, too many other irons in the fire. Ain't got time. You think about that. I ain't got time for the body of Christ. And I think the body, I think the church, and, and again, I want to I wanna say, and you know, I'm, I'm not one, you better be here every time the door's open, and you better not miss a Sunday or you're going to go to hell. You know, ain't, okay? That ain't right. But the church ought to be the most important thing next to your family in your life. More important than your job. So you want to put your job above the body of Christ? Mm-mm. God your family, his body, deserves, demands our devotion. So you are no longer outsiders or aliens, but fellow citizens with every other Christian. You belong now to the household of God, to the family of God. I belong. Just just look around and say, check out your family this morning. Look who you belong to. (laughs) Look who you're connected. That belong is a strong word. Amen. Well, we need help, don't we? Belonging. (laughs) So in Christ, we who are many form one body, each member belongs to the other. Each member belongs to all the others. You get the, I mean, it's, we know the, the thumb and the finger and the head and the ear. and the nose, They're all connected. They belong. They have a part. They have a service. They have a, a function. Independently, they're useless. 
What good is my thumb over here in the closet? My thumb belongs to my body. It belongs to my head. You see? It's connected. It hurts right now. I got an bone, some kind of finger going on. And see, I know there's a connection. Nerves are telling me, the brain's sending message. It's pain, it's pain, it's pain, it's pain. That's a good thing. Tells me it's connected. Connected. Belonging, belonging. In Christ. So what does it mean to belong to the church? I'm going to talk about some things, uh, just some practical things that's important if you are devoted. Everybody say devoted. Ali, would you take that, please? Let me turn the AC on here. We'd be devoted to some cold air. I'll protect. If you're going to be devoted, number one, one of four, I will protect the unity of my church. Now, it's his church, but you belong, right? You're a part, integral part. How am I going to protect the unity of my church? By acting in love towards each other. Romans 14, 19. Let us concentrate on the things which make for harmony or peace. Romans 14, 19. And on the growth of our fellowship together. Let us focus. Let us concentrate. Let us pursue the things that make for peace. Because we want unity among the body. That's why I, don't, I, try, I try to treat your body good. That's why we need to eat right. That's why we need to exercise. Moving right along. Oh, I'm, I should have brought that up. But my wife's here. She started exercising. She's waiting on me. I'm coming, honey. I'm coming. She's she about to wear me out. Watching her, Jason. 30 minutes. She's on the treadmill 30 minutes every day. So let us concentrate on things that make for peace or harmony and the growth of our fellowship. So it's a mutual upbuilding. If we're going to be part of the church, the body of Christ, we need to be unified, right? And we need to follow, we need to pursue the things that make harmony and peace, not arguments, not divisiveness. When Jesus, before he died on the cross, his heart cry was, Father, that they may be one, just as we are. The church will never amount to anything if it's not unified. That's why he prayed his prayer. And guess what? I believe Jesus' prayers get answered. Hallelujah. So we're going to come in agreement. We're going to be in alignment with him and in unity with each other. That's how the body functions in harmony. Have a sincere, the scripture says in 1 Peter 1, Have a sincere love for other believers. Love one another earnestly with all your heart. Boy, now, that's a thought, isn't it? Love one another. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Just shake it all out. The Bible says don't even say you love God, who you haven't seen, if you don't love who you do see. Love, love, love. The Beatles had it right. All you need is love. Ba, 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 ba. All you need is love. I was a big Beatles fan. Any, any, any of y'all used to be. I'm talking about our farmer life, you know. That Bible said in Ephesians 2, you once were. Well, we once were Beatles fans. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I like the Ringo was my man. So we're going to love each other from a pure heart. I, I think that's important. That I like to translate it says pure heart because we don't love each other for what we can get out of them. See, it says out of a pure heart, out of a love that has right motives. So our purpose and our, our, our motive for loving is pure. It's not motivated by selfishness. It's not motivated by, hey, this will benefit me. This is good for me. I'm going to get in this relationship. See, that is selfish. Whether it's a marriage relationship or or our friends, brothers and sisters. No, love one another fervently out of a pure heart. And then it says, regarding refusing to gossip or speak evil of others. Ephesians four twenty nine. Do not let any unwholesome 
talk come out of your mouths, except what is helpful for the building of others up. Ah, but we do that, we'll, we may say a lot less, huh? Now, I believe God wants us to say more, but he wants us to be positive, encouraging, building up, edifying up. Boy, you have no reason to tear nobody down. There's just no, there's no. You, who are you to be critical? Just thought I'd. Don't let any corrupt talk come out of your mouth. Except what is helpful for building others up according to their need. So it gives grace. Gracious talk. Let us, because we will seek to protect the unity, our talk will be gracious. Our talk will be kind. And we will love each other out of a pure heart. And we will follow the leaders. According to Hebrews chapter Chapter 13, verse 17, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would not be advantageous to you. And here's what I want to say cautiously. We know that to obey your leaders in the Lord, but it's not talking about some blind obedience whatever pastor says no that's not right when you when you decide i'm going to blindly follow anybody so you're on that's dangerous territory amen why why do i say that on one hand i'm saying obey the leaders the bible says that so as we quote the bible obey those that have rule over you authority over you and the elders and pastors of the church biblically have that to supervise amen it doesn't mean they got an iron fist and they're there you know you do what i say you better mind me no that's not bible right it's 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 rulership in the sense of protection and uh Direction, thank you. But I just want to say, don't blindly follow nobody, me or anybody else. I say it because, we're, number one, we're humans. I'm, I'm as human as anybody. I am capable of making a mistake the same as every one of you. Right? That's absolutely true. There is no perfect human being. Okay? And so you, I don't think you, everything anybody says, you put it against the word. Okay. Does that agree with the Bible? See, is that in harmony with the Bible? Is this, this person is telling me to do, asking me to do the, the way they're leading and guiding and directing and, and should I follow that? Does it agree with the Bible? Okay. That's our plumb bob. Amen? That's our plumb bob. But because we love the church, we're going to protect the unity of the church. And secondly, because we love the church, we're going to share the responsibility of my church by praying for its effectiveness and growth, by praying for its people, by praying for its ministries, by by praying for everything that has to do with the church. I'm going to pray for the church. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, the first couple of verses, uh, we always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. And, and there's many, many, many scriptures. I'm just, this is just a synopsis. It's just a, every one of these is a big sermon. So I'm just trying to capsulize this. But Paul, you read the letters. Boy, what did he do? I'm praying for the church. I'm praying for the church. We're praying for the church. We're praying for the body. We're praying for the believers. Don't neglect to pray. For your church, for its leaders, for its ministry, for the people, for everything connected. And by inviting the unchurched to attend. Luke 14, 23, the master said to the servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and urge the people there to come so my house will be full. I, I just believe that God wants to fill this place. 
I think we've got 300 chairs. They're not all out, all out here, but I sure would like to put them in here. We've got some behind this door. We've got some out there in the classroom. Wouldn't it be nice to have to buy some more? I really believe, and here's what I believe with all my heart, that if we take this seriously about being the church, full of his spirit, receive of his glory, I I just believe that there's people begging to come. I really believe. I believe they're that hurting, they're that helpless, they're that hopeless, they're that needy. Now, they may not initially... But as we go doing works of love and serve, you see, most people, they have five encounters with somebody, with an action, with somebody that sowed some seed, done an act of love before they accept Christ. On the average, five encounters. Somebody said something. Somebody did something, number two. Somebody else said something, number three. Somebody else helped them, number four. Somebody else shared the love of God, number five. You see, as you plant that seed and that soil is tilled up and the church is praying, see, for their hearts and for their soul, then it begins, whoosh, takes root. It takes root. Somebody plants a seed. Somebody else waters it. Somebody comes around and puts a little more water on it, a little more sunshine. Next thing you know, they got it. And I believe there is people in this community. You know why people will come? Because you invite them. You know the number one reason they don't come? Because we don't invite them. Not everybody you invite is going to come. But I guarantee you, you keep inviting, and, and we'll double. Just, just, just get one person. Everybody here just get one person to come. Now, I'm not just out here, let's, let's grow the church, let's fill the church up. It's not about numbers. It's about people. I tell you, if you go, And you invite your friends, you love your friends, you you love them, and you give them the love and the grace and the kindness of God. People are hungry for that. And we warmly welcome them. Ooh, they say warmly. Welcome and receive. I'm reading in Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Welcome and receive to your hearts one another. Then even as Christ has welcomed and received you for the glory of God. That's verse 7. I, I want to read verse 1. I got a note here that said read verse 1. So Romans chapter 15. Let's go back up to verse 1. I remember now it's about the week. This is cool. This is good. We Because this is the context that it's written in. Now we may skip down to verse 7. But here's the context. Part of it anyway. We who are strong have an obligation to bear the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. It ain't about us. See, we got to get unselfish as we possibly can. But we who are strong have an obligation. We ought to bear the failings or the infirmities of the weak. This word weak is a, means a lot, but it generally means just someone who is not strong. Not strong. Two words. One's dunamis. Doesn't have power. Doesn't have power. They, their, their strength has gone out of them. Maybe it's physical. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's... It's, maybe it's uh, faith is weak. Maybe they're a young Christian. Maybe they're not where they're going to be. And so right now, it's our obligation, our responsibility to help them. And the word bear them literally means to lift. Let me help you. See, if we had something whole, real hard to carry and somebody come along and they helped us, guess what? They could do it. They can't do it by themselves right now. And they're expecting, they are needing you and needing me to come along beside them and do what Galatians chapter 5 says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law. There are weak people among us. Weak because physically, weak emotionally. There's there's various reasons. 
people can be weak. Their strength, is, they, they're just not strong right now. But then it goes down to say, each of us please his neighbor for his good, build him up. Christ did not please himself. And uh, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, with the weak and with the strong. So we don't look at people that are weak and say, man, what's wrong with you? Huh? You better get up. You better start acting right. See? Or how about, can I help you? I've noticed you, you know, going through something. Again, it could be physical, emotional, psychological, it could be on the job, whatever. It's not your job to criticize. It's our obligation, according to the word, because we love the church and we seek the unity and the harmony. And we, by the way, she belongs to me more ways than one. Uh oh, I, I, <laughs> whoa, whoa, I just stuck out in a hole out there, did nothing, Wayne. Whoa. I mean, we belong to each other as the body of Christ, but anyway, in case anybody knows, she's my wife. I don't know anybody knows that. But <laughs> we belong to each other. <clears throat> I'm just the head. (laughs) Oh, we do. But you understand what I'm saying? Boy, wouldn't it be good if we love the church and we want the unity of it, amen, and we began to accept the responsibility of it. And that's for members, the weak and strong. So we got some that don't need any help right now. Thank you. And we got others, boy, they're crying out. We need help. It's our obligation to help them. It's our obligation to help them. So that responsibility, warmly welcome those who visit. I thank God for the most part. I mean, we're not perfect, and, and I'm sure we've made mistakes. I'm not, I know we've made mistakes, and not everybody that comes maybe gets a warm welcome. That, that's an exception. But by far what I hear more than anything, what a friendly church. What a friendly church. I've had people come here. I just want to brag on y'all a little bit. Oh, People come here, and, and, and I call all the visitors, and, hey, good to have you today, and, or Sunday, and, and um, by and large. And if they visit other churches, I just want to tell you, friendliest church I've ever been to. That's not uncommon, you know, and warmly, and, and loved us, and accepted us. And I believe everybody that walks through that door deserves our warm welcome. Or how they're dressed. I don't care what their lifestyle is. Did you hear me? I don't care what their lifestyle is, who they're living with, who they're living without. Okay? Love them, accept them. And the Bible even says if they dress pretty nasty, they, they, they get this seat. You with the fine clothes on there, <laughs> y'all just scoot on back there, you know. You see? See what God does? Woo! Help us, Jesus, to act like Jesus. You see, he went to the weak. He went to the feeble. Boy, he had a, an affinity. He was, whoa, drawn. Here's a needy person right there. He didn't check her out, and, you know, and give her a quiz first, Jonathan. He said, just let me love you. Let me help you. I have an obligation. Can I love you? And so we're going to protect the unity of the church. We're going to fulfill the responsibility of the church by praying and inviting and welcoming others. How many can agree with that this morning? Got a couple more we're going to talk about another time. I want us to pray this morning before we... Liz and I are probably fixing to go to Tyler to see Greg and, and Tana's daddy, who is, uh, got put in ICU yesterday evening, and, and he's been battling and and uh, so he's on life support, and so we're probably going to go down there in, in a few minutes. Family's weak. And uh, God, give us grace to, to be there in people's lives. You hear me? Boy, I just believe with all of my heart, just a minute, okay. with all of my heart, if we do the Father's business, 
Not piously, religious, but man, we love God. We love Jesus. We're in fellowship with him, and we love people, and we minister to people. This church, I'll just tell you right now, 300 chairs is not enough. I believe that. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a big numbers guy. I do not believe that numbers is the indication of health alone. But I do believe the body grows. You understand? A healthy body grows. Emily's growing. Lucy's growing. Hallie's growing. Yeah, hello, Hallie. She's growing. Do you understand what I mean? So because we are a body, because we're healthy, you see the result of that the natural, the, is, is growth in the body. Amen. Thank God for his church. And I believe with all my heart, it deserves and demands our heartfelt devotion. Amen. Greg's dead. Greg's dead. Yes. Amen. Amen. Pamela, her mom, Pamela, and everybody. There's some other people. Just the, but we just know that the, the list is endless. People in our lives that are just, and we've all got problems. We've all got, you know, a person in here don't have an issue. Amen. Don't have some situation. I'm dealing with something to some degree. And so we need to link together. Let's do that this morning. Let's do that this morning. Next Sunday, as you kind of find and, and, and just join hands with somebody. Uh, so ne- next Sunday is what I'm going to call.